What is neoconservatism? Neoconservatism is a political movement that emerged in the United States and the United Kingdom during the 1960s, particularly influenced by the Vietnam War. It began among foreign policy hawks who became disillusioned with the increasingly pacifist Democratic Party and the counterculture of the 1960s. Neoconservatives advocate for the unilateral promotion of democracy and interventionism in international affairs, grounded in a militaristic and realist philosophy of peace through strength. They are known for their staunch opposition to communism and political radicalism. The term, neoconservative, was popularized in 1973 by socialist leader Michael Harrington, who used it to describe intellectuals like Daniel Bell, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and Irving Kristol. These individuals, initially aligned with the left, grew disenchanted with the Democratic Party's shift towards what they viewed as excessively liberal policies. They saw the party's new direction as an effort to distance itself from Cold War liberalism, represented by presidents like Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy, and Lyndon B. Johnson. Neoconservatives, therefore, migrated to the Republican Party, forming a crucial part of the Reagan coalition and the broader conservative movement. During the 1950s and early 1960s, future neoconservatives supported the civil rights movement and racial integration, generally endorsing military action to prevent a communist victory in Vietnam. However, neoconservatism fully emerged as a reaction against the Cold War policies and the American New Left's new politics. Alarmed by perceived anti-Semitic sentiments within the Black Power movement, neoconservatives criticized Marxist-Leninist politics and extensive government planning, which they believed led to negative outcomes. Prominent neoconservatives like Irving Kristol and publications like The Public Interest were central to neoconservative thought, emphasizing critiques of liberal state interventions. Many early neoconservatives were disillusioned Democrats, including figures like Daniel Patrick Moynihan and Jean Kirkpatrick. A significant number of neoconservatives were former moderate socialists from the Socialist Party of America, which evolved into Social Democrats, USA, SDUSA. Norman Podhoretz's magazine commentary became a major neoconservative publication in the 1970s. As the Democratic Party leaned leftward, neoconservatives, disillusioned by policies like President Johnson's Great Society, warned that adopting liberal social positions could be politically disastrous. They rejected the counter-cultural new left and the anti-Americanism prevalent in Vietnam War protests. Supporting politicians like Senator Henry, Scoop, Jackson and Ronald Reagan, neoconservatives aimed to counter Soviet expansionism and organized within think tanks like the American Enterprise Institute and the Heritage Foundation. Leo Strauss's philosophical ideas significantly influenced neoconservatism. Strauss emphasized moral clarity, classical philosophy, and the Judeo-Christian heritage as essential to Western tradition. His students, including prominent figures like Paul Wolfowitz and Bill Kristol, further developed neoconservative foreign policy. Jean Kirkpatrick's article, Dictatorships and Double Standards, articulated a neoconservative foreign policy, criticizing Jimmy Carter's detente with the Soviet Union. Kirkpatrick argued for a pragmatic approach, supporting authoritarian regimes over communist ones to avoid the greater repression of Marxist-Leninist control. In the 1980s and 1990s, neoconservatives endorsed aggressive policies to reshape the Middle East and opposed the foreign policies of George H. W. Bush and Bill Clinton. They advocated for the removal of Saddam Hussein and stronger support for Taiwan against China. The 1996 Clean Break report, led by Richard Pearl, called for a more aggressive U.S. Middle East policy. Under George W. Bush, neoconservatives gained significant influence, particularly after the 9-11 attacks. The Bush Doctrine of Preemptive War, outlined in the 2002 National Security Strategy, reflected neoconservative ideals of confronting perceived threats before they materialized. Critics within the defense and national security sectors attributed the Iraq War to neoconservative influence. During the 2008 presidential election, John McCain's foreign policy views combined neoconservative and pragmatic elements. Barack Obama, while critical of Bush's Iraq policies, retained some Bush-era military officials. In the 2010s and 2020s, neoconservatives' influence waned within the Republican Party, facing competition from the Tea Party and Trump-era populist movements. Some neoconservatives joined the Trump administration, supporting hawkish policies towards Iran and Venezuela but opposing troop withdrawals from Syria and diplomatic outreach to North Korea. Neoconservatism has faced criticism from various quarters. Critics argue that neoconservative foreign policies are overly aggressive, unilateralist, and dismissive of international consensus, especially through organizations like the United Nations.
Critics from both the left and right also challenge the significant role Israel plays in shaping neoconservative Middle East policies. Neoconservatives defend their stance by arguing that national security is best achieved by promoting freedom and democracy abroad, aligning with the democratic peace theory. They emphasize democracy promotion, foreign aid, and military intervention, contrasting with traditional conservatism's support for friendly regimes for trade and anti-communism, even at the expense of democratic systems.